So moving on, finding domains of composite functions. So here's another example. We have f of x is x squared plus 2x minus 5, and g of x is 3x plus 1. Again, perfectly reasonable functions. Find f of g and g of f in general. Notice we are not plugging a specific number in. Just imagine what happens if I plug a generic uh, variable x in. What do we get out? Then find the domain. So try to figure out what happens if I take g of x and plug it into f of x. Similarly, try to figure out what happens when you plug f of x into g of x. So <clears throat> the domain of f and g individually are all real numbers. But let's see what happens when we take the composition. So for f of g of x, we're going to take g of x and plug it into f. So remember, g of x is 3x plus 1. Okay, so I'm taking 3x plus 1 and plugging it into f. Whatever f was, sorry, whatever the input was, f says square it, add it to 2 times the input, and subtract 5. So now our input isn't x. The input is 3x plus 1. So we square that, we add 2 times it, and then we subtract 5. And now we just have to... Foil out that first thing, which is 9x squared plus 6x plus 1. Distribute the 2, and we get 6x plus 2. And then we have minus 5, and now it's just a matter of simplifying it down to get 9x squared plus 12x minus 2. Okay. So here are g and f. If you got this one wrong, try to now compute what is the g of f. We just did f composed with g or f of g. The next problem is going to ask us g of f or g composed with f. Remember, we're also trying to find domains of these things. So what was f of g? It's just a nice degree 2 polynomial. The domain is still all real numbers. Okay, so the next one, what is of f? So we take f of x, which was x squared plus 2x minus 5. We plug it into g, which was 3 times the input plus 1. So this exponent does not belong there. That's a typo. Okay, but if you distribute that 3, you get 3x squared plus 6x minus 15, and now we just simplify it, and there we have it. And again, it's a nice degree 2 polynomial, so the domain is all real numbers. So let's try this again. Okay, Here are f of x and g of x. Notice they're no longer polynomials, but they are rational functions, which means the domain is going to be a little trickier. But still, let's compute the domain of f of g. So in order to plug a number into f of g, it has to be in the domain of g. So here's g of x. So I can't plug in 3. So x is not allowed to be 3. That's not the end of the problem. So I know right now I can't plug in 3, but I don't really know much else. The other part is that what I get out from g of x had better not be equal to negative 4. If I got out negative 4 from g of x. So suppose g of x is equal to negative 4. Then f of g of x would be equal to f of negative 4, and that's definitely a problem. So I don't want to get negative 4 out from g of x. So set g of x equal to negative 4 and see which value of x is definitely prohibited. Sorry, g of x equal to negative 4. Well, if you set g of x equal to negative 4, multiply both sides by x minus 3, distribute, subtract um, the negative, sorry, subtract the 12 over the other side and divide by negative 4, and you get out x equals 2. So if x equals 2, I can plug that into g just fine. Here is g of 2. g of 2 is negative 4, no problem. But then f of that, that would be bad. So while I can plug 2 into g, I can't take the output of g and plug it into f. <clears throat> Not 0, 2. Okay, So 2 is also prohibited from the domain. So the domain of f of g is everything except for 2 and 3. 3 was prohibited because it wasn't in the domain of g, and 2 is prohibited because what g spits out is not in the domain of f. Okay, so we'll keep working through examples like this, trying to keep the videos in this section nice and short.